Yeah, I just want to say a couple of words before uh, Ken gets into the real uh, exciting, juicy stuff. Um, Alice is a, a culmination of uh, an idea, a dream, uh, when uh, the, um, I suppose, uh, WinUE first came out and Amiga Forever, and I thought, wouldn't it be great to have an Amiga OS 4 laptop, or OS 3 laptop actually, sorry. And, uh, and obviously we all want a power PC laptop, but you know, the costs uh, and development costs are, uh, are quite prohibitive. It doesn't mean it will never happen, but we can actually fast track that and give us something that makes uh, our life on the road with uh, a laptop much more pleasurable. So uh, Alice uh, was uh, originally conceived as, um, I think it was called, not Alice, it was called, oh, I can't remember. It was an idea for a laptop many years ago. Uh, with Michael Batalana and uh, Nian of Amikit and I got talking. He'd already been working closely with Ken Lester and you'll hear from Ken now. And over the last year or so, probably the last 15 months, uh, we've been trying to refine uh, our ideas and hardware and you know, how we actually put this thing together to make it usable uh, for the, you know, the average user. We have about five or six Alice laptops in the, in the, in the wild. Uh, actually less two, because <laughs> two disappeared in my car, it got broken into. Um, uh, but uh, the, the developers, the development team of Ken Lester, Pat Wall, Jan at Amiga Kit, or Ami Kit, and, and myself all had models and uh, were, have been testing and, and using the laptop for the last uh, year. I've been using it with me on all my travels, hence it got stolen on this trip. <laughs> uh, so without out more talking about it, I want Ken now to give you a technical overview of the Alice laptop and, uh, and some of the features, some of the cool features, I think, uh, of using it. So, over to you. I can't hear myself. Can, can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, now, I was told I'm supposed to talk about what I'm up to, so I may or may not get to, to the Alice laptop. I don't know if anybody's interested in that part of it. Um, I'm just kidding. I don't think you guys are at all interested in any of the stuff I'm up to other than this. Um, basically, um, uh, Trevor came, came to me actually two years ago and mentioned, mentioned that he had wanted to do a laptop, and that is not something that necessarily was on my radar, but I was really interested in... Uh, um, uh, Linux and booting uh, Amiga OS on Linux and I, I don't know how many people know me from the past but um, I've painted Amiga icons and skins and themes and it's kind of that's kind of been what I've been interested in I'm a uh, former comic book artist I don't know if anybody remembers me from the 90s but um, um, this, this is just kind of what what I've been interested in and I created a Linux distribution called Amy Pup which is a terrible name, but it's, it's based on Puppy Linux, which is this little 200 meg uh, Linux system that runs on a thumb drive and you can plug it into anything and run it anywhere. And I had that running, uh, um, at that time, originally uh, EUAE, which is a lot less technically developed um, than WinUAE and then later FSUAE. Um, so I, I had gotten that system working on this small version of Linux. And then Trevor came to me and wanted, or came to Jan actually, but uh, he had he had expressed his desire for this laptop, and so we started melding the two ideas, and we came up with this this system. Nothing here is is all that custom. Anybody could do this. The thing about it is, is though we have Trevor has brought a lot of expertise to the table to make this happen. It's not saying that anybody can't do this, but you've got. Um, you've got Pat Wall, who's a Linux guy, making sure that uh, a lot of that material um, um, or a lot of that expertise gets brought to the table. I'm doing the graphics. You've got Jan, who knows everybody and talks to everybody and, and gets things done. Uh, if you're not using Amy Kit, you're not really using the latest uh, 68K distribution because he, uh, anytime that we've, you know, over the, over the years, because I've been with him since the very beginning, uh, um, in I think it was 2005 was the first Amy kit. Um, anytime you know we've discussed something and said, hey, it would be cool to do this, or hey, it would be cool to do this, he would just cold call the uh, the developer. Uh, some of these guys had been you know hadn't been doing it for 10 years. 
and he's got like about a hundred percent success rate in getting them to update the software to whatever it was we needed. Um, you know, as uh, as, as screen got, screens got larger, he was getting old classic software to get upgraded to, to work at high, higher, higher and higher and higher reses. I mean, he did that just recently with um, um, Show, Show Amiga 96. That's the start screen that he likes to use that has a has a, a scroll bar that didn't support 1920 by 1080 or, uh, in the case of the Alice laptop, 1366 by 768. Um, uh, which is a significant number because it's a 16 by 9 ratio, and, and you know, and, and we're we're trying to keep compatibility there. And and with an eye toward performance, you know, you want a decent screen that can be driven at a, at a respectable rate. Anyway, uh, but I digress. Um, the, I'm going to just basically walk you through the way it works. I'm sure everybody has see, has seen it, has seen the videos online, and and, and that. But I'm going to hopefully dispel some rumors because it's like um, people have speculated that there was custom Linux code and stuff. This is, this is all off-the-shelf stuff. This is an off-the-shelf lap laptop. This is Ubuntu Mate. Um, various versions uh, right now we're 16.04. Um, uh, on my system is 14.04 uh, because this is one of the original systems and for personal reasons I like I like uh, some of the aspects of 14.04 better than 16.04 but that's neither here nor there. Um, 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 we've got uh, uh, WinUAE running on Wine, running on Linux, which sounds convoluted, but it's not really. It actually, um, the performance, at least for, for 68K, is comparable to FSUAE, or some people say it's better. You know, I find it comparable. I don't know. I haven't done any uh, benchmarks. But that allows us to use a little program called WinLaunch that has been included with WinUAE for as long as I can remember. And it's a little program that tags out to the host operating system. And um, by doing a little bit of scripting magic on the host side, um, uh, which in, in, in the case of uh, Alice is Ubuntu, um, basically Wine has, a, has, has a, the ability to interface with Linux. So basically we have WinLaunch interfacing with this little script in Linux, which interfaces with Linux. So we're able to access applications within the emulation that, uh, and I may be jumping ahead, uh, that you wouldn't otherwise be able to access. Um, the first thing I want to show you is the start screen, because uh, I worked really hard on this. <laughs> it's probably, um, uh, it, it very well could be, can you see that, Robert? Could very well be um, as hard as the whole rest of it combined. It's basically because uh, modern uh, computers use uh, EFI or UEFI, and it's great for security, and it's great for all the things that it's supposed to be great for, but it is, it, it really fights this whole dual, triple, quadruple boot, boot system. Uh, and uh, so we, we, basically, we being me, had to go to, Go to school here and learn how this was this work. Once you once you figure it out, it's 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 not too bad. But for for the longest time, it was complete voodoo. So when you turn on your Alice laptop, you're confronted by a screen. Uh, right now, I have three icons. Um, at various times, we have, I've had four. I've had a, a a generic Ubuntu icon, which ultimately um, everybody decided was a little bit uh, redundant since we already had uh, Ubuntu. Um, sitting underneath Amy Kit and underneath OS4. So uh, um, uh, I'm going to show you how this obviously Windows, um, which on my laptop is uh, situated third, which is the way Jan wanted it, but uh, we can't always do that. Um, I'm going to plug this in and we're going we're gonna to start Windows first. We're going to try to anyway. Um, where's the, I lost the, there we go. This should work correctly. This is, uh, um, and this is basically just made to look more or less like the uh, um, Linux version. The idea being that uh, the, the wallpaper matches the wallpaper in, in Amy Kit and, and it's lined up perfectly and the toolbars are hidden. Um, Alex Perez said that he didn't like the uh, toolbar hidden, so uh, um, 
you know, that, that's a matter of, of preferences. You can always, uh, um, you know, change that. You know, it, it, it's, up, it's up to you. Um, I just want to show you a little bit about what's been going on the last year or so. Uh, Tony Weiland, who is, is, is technically a member of the, uh, the uh, Alice team, has been making tremendous strides on the emulator front. Um, if, uh, if you played with uh, OS 4, I guess a year ago, or it's been two years now since, since, uh, since he first uh, made that change to WinUAE to be able to run uh, uh, PowerPC Classic uh, hardware. Um, he has um, eliminated the problem of, of uh, uh, video because it's using the, the uh, UAE uh, graphics driver. So it's like you could have 1920 by 1080. You could have a 4K monitor. You could have whatever whatever you want. There's no limitation there. Um, um, he has improved uh, network speed. He has. Uh, um, uh, we've now got the ability to use uh, different sound cards. Um, it, it's basically become a lot more mature. You know, we've got uh, uh, everything working a lot better. Um, I'm just going to hover my mouse pointer over this little point here. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we, we've got uh, less issues running the system than, than we had you know, a short time ago, um, the, the system, it, it works really nicely. And um, uh, unfortunately, I don't have anything installed here. Um, we, uh, uh, we should have had some, some memory hungry apps here installed to show it off, but I uh, uh, wasn't thinking ahead. So uh, anyway, um, if you know what to look for, you know why I showed you that. We're going to go ahead and uh, we're going, to, we're going to restart, and this time we're going to, we're going, you're going to watch a boot of OS4 and, uh, and, um, and Amy Kitt. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to think that Amy Kitt was the main reason you were, you'd be buying this, but we all know it's for OS4. All right. Um, you can't see this beautiful start screen, but I can. And we'll see at what point it uh, decides to let you join the, uh, there we go. It's doing some screen machinations. Oh, it's squishing the screen. We had it uh, working nicely and now it's, all right, I guess that's a little better. Um, basically it booted Linux. You never saw it. Um, uh, it's, it, this is running OS4 on uh, FSUAE. So uh, until he gets the uh, changes that uh, Tony Weilin has, has made to uh, um, when you uh, incorporate it into his, uh, his system, um, we're not going to be able to, uh, um, to take advantage of it. And it's displaying squished here um, for whatever reason. Um, you're just going to have to trust me that it's, it's not doing that over here, and it, it actually looks okay on, on this 23-inch monitor. Um, OS 4 does not have the ability to launch Linux apps directly. It kind of lives in a world of its own, at least it does now. Certainly, that changes the Native uh, uh, file systems are, we can now use uh, uh, directories. Um, you know, I boot from it, but you know, um, um, in uh, in the Windows version, I actually had a, a, a Windows directory mounted here. I called it files or whatever. So transferring files is no longer. In this case, uh, anybody that's familiar with FSUAE, you know, you hit F12 and it goes to there. Um, we've I've remapped the or we've re remapped the Windows key to F11, so that or that's never mind. That's Amy Kit. Uh, but if you hit the win if you hit the Windows key in uh, OS 4, you can actually launch whatever you want to launch here. And just like uh, with the Rabbit Hole apps, um, it, uh, it 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 looks like it's um, you know the the Linux uh, it's all been skinned to look like uh, OS 4. So 
you know, it, it's an illusion, you know, it's like n nobody's trying to fool anything. But the idea is that, you know, this, this, you've got your OS4 system, you've got, you know, you've got the ability to run uh, more modern applications that, that are robust enough to handle the nastiness that the, the world throws at it. And, uh, and still look like, like your, your, uh, your the Linux or the Linux installs are also set. Um, if, if you're familiar with FSUAE, uh, uh, the, the way you quit is F11Q. And uh, um, if you're familiar with, uh, or, I'm repeating myself. Um, OS4 does not have the hardware shut down. But it doesn't, doesn't have the ability to So you just hit F11Q and it'll shut down. And Linux has been configured to shut down too. So basically, you start Linux and then you have to do something. It launches the app or the emulator. Um, the, the wallpaper in Linux is, is made to match OS 4 so that, you know, there's some things going on, but, you know, it goes straight into the, the emulator. And when you quit the emulator, it shuts everything down. So. And, and, and that's it's easy enough. You can you can shut that off if you want if you want to just get straight into Linux and do something. You know, in my case, it's usually for system maintenance. You know, if I want to up, update something on the Linux side uh, or just generally improve things. Um, I'm going to show you Rabbit Hole now. Rabbit Hole is um, um, let's see, is it going to show the booting? Getting a little bit of it. Okay, well, that's a whole nother revolution. It's come up with something else. Oh, that is the only time it's all is is basically we have an interface out to. Right, we're gonna we're gonna unplug here for a second and see what happens because. Uh, Screen resolutions are uh, playing havoc with uh, with my system. Um, yeah, that's not going to work. We're going to restart. I'm going to plug in the HDMI after it's booted because it's not it's not liking. Um, anyway, Rabbit Hole is it's basically the equivalent of a menu access system to, to Linux apps. You know, that's what I was talking about. A win launch, reaching out to Wine, and, and Wine passing the, the request on to um, whatever application. You know, if we run Firefox, it's going to pass the, or the, uh, the call on to Firefox. Uh, if we run uh, LibreOffice, it's going to pass it on to Office. Uh, got Skype on here, uh, Steam. A few other things. It's hard to know exactly what, what to put on. Um, all right, do we have a work? Okay, we do. What I was trying to show you is that um, these are some pre-configured scripts. So basically, the rabbit hole, which is, you know, Alice down the rabbit hole, and, you know, and the, the other operating systems are the other side. Um, we can select and, and launch. Um, I don't know if we have the internet set here. Shall we, uh, shall we just let it restore whatever I had going on last time? Oh good, the internet's working. Um, but you can see that it more or less looks like you're running it on, on, uh, uh, on the Amiga. If you click off of it, it's going to go behind there because technically uh, 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 Amy Kidd is, is a task running on Linux and Firefox is another task. But you really, really quickly get used to just alt-tabbing, you know, back and forth um, to uh, um, run whatever. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, uh, what do I want to... We also have some, some Windows apps here, Notepad, <laughs> um, in case... Uh, I actually like no Notepads. So I shouldn't make fun of it. But uh, there's Office. So now we have Office, we have uh, Firefox, and um, let's see. We also, uh, Jan has configured this so that all the def, the def icons reach out to Linux. So um, I didn't bring anything, but um, I believe his 
uh, various links reach out. So you click on a, a photograph, it's going to, uh, you know, or ping file or a JPEG or whatever, it's going to load up in Shotwell. You, you pick on it or click on an HTML file, it's going to load up in Firefox. You, you click on a video file, it's going to load up in uh, um, uh, mPlayer. Um, you know, the idea being that in Amy Kit, you're about as integrated as you, as you can get without actually building an Amithalon style system, you know, where, where uh, Linux is just a dumb, uh, dumb hardware abstraction layer. Um, um, and uh, uh, as much as I miss, miss Amithalon and, and that whole paradigm, uh, this system comes very close to, to, being, uh, uh, to being that. And it's all, all off-the-shelf parts. It's all software anybody can build. Um, um, but we just did. Um, what I did, in addition to this, part of the agreement is I agreed to paint some new icons. And I have not painted icons since 2008. And this is a completely new set. Um, well, I shouldn't, let me, let me, everything here is new. Um, I, di I didn't want to get involved in uh, um, painting a whole new set because you'd be talking about thousands of hours of work. And as it is, I've got hundreds and hundreds of hours into this. Um, but we have a new set of, of icons, which I, I tried to have some sense of uh, visual continuity with Mason's stuff, but still look my own. And also bring in some of the co colors that have become popular uh, uh, lately, and also remove all boy balls, anything else that might get me in trouble. Uh, and this is what I came up with. I want to call icons version 5, but I'm going to resist. <laughs> then that that presupposes that I'm going to do more of them, but no, these are strictly for Alice and uh, um, for the uh, at the Alice project. Uh, for Amy Cadex. I assume Amy Cadex will eventually down the road be released for everybody, but right now, Don um, wants, wants to strictly be um, um, an Alice exclusive, and maybe that's why he nine open because because we went straight from uh, Amy Kit eight to to ten. And uh, nine will be uh, some uh, some version that's halfway between. Um, maybe we won't give away some of the stuff. Um, help me out here. What, what do you want? What do you want to see it do? Um, are, are you open up for questions? More or less. I, I'm I'm rambling, so it's like, what would you, what what haven't I explained? What it what is what is in here that uh, is uh, is not apparent? Why is the screen cut off there on the bottom? You can't even see the, the stuff I was doing down here. Oh, all right. Well, if anybody wants to come up and see what it actually looks like. It's cutting off the bottom half where the, uh, all the icons are in the start menu. Uh, I know some people hate start menus, so maybe it's not that. Sure. Okay. Thanks, Ken. I thought that was, uh, was pretty good. Can you hear me okay? No, I'm not on. Okay, we'll, we'll share the same one. Sort of All right. Yeah, just go ahead and take it. That was giving problems. Uh, yeah. What's that? Oh, really? Okay, never mind. I'm always dangerous and you never know what I'm going to say, so I've got to be careful. <laughs> um, I, I think um, Ken gave a, a quite a good overview of what Alice is about. Um, some of the things that um, are probably worth saying from um, a user point of view, um, it's very stable. Um, it's, it's got you know, better over the. I mean, and, and I should have said, uh, Tony Tony Wyland also has an Alice laptop. Does, yes. Yeah. So we we, we um, provided one to Tony so he could do the work, and the work he's done over the last. You know, three or four months has really boosted the performance of WinUE, especially in the Amiga OS 4.1 Final Edition. Alice comes with a copy of Final Edition Classic, licensed. It comes with a, a, a cop it get, comes with an Amiga Forever license for the special files you need there. It also comes with a, an MUI license, so you get the full MUI experience if you want. Um, uh, and the, of course you get the class, OS 4.1 Classic Disc. Um, we're looking at the models we're looking at at the moment, and it's not the model that uh, t uh, that uh, Ken's showing there. It's uh, a 15.6 inch uh, laptop with 1366. 1366 by 768. 
it's 15 by 9 inch. Yeah, and it's quite nice, nice size and it's nice to use. And I used that laptop for my presentation after I bought another laptop, <laughs> uh, after my laptop was stolen. Um, so we're looking at a price range starting from the low end at 650 US dollars, uh, all in. Um, obviously sales tax is on top. You know, if it's if it's coming from outside the or out of state or outside the country, there's no sales tax, and uh, it can go up to uh, 650, uh, 800 dollars, depending whether you want SSDs in there rather than hard drives, or how much RAM you want. So there's a flexibility on the price line, and really, it's not. <laughs> it sounds crazy. This it's not a project to make money. It's a project to give a, a portable um, machine with a meager flavour to um, Amiga users and still have the flexibility of accessing uh, programs that are not available on Amiga OS uh, Classic or Amiga OS 4. So we're open for questions. I've got quite a few, so if you want to take everybody else's well. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take one for you and then yeah, take one for you. So Trevor and Ken, just put the mics on. Okay. I was working on turning it on when you started not using them. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little bit of lag between when you want it to work and I press the button. Thank you very much. It's difficult to um, engineer out that human element, you know, <laughs> working on it. Um, okay, okay, Bill, can you hear me? Is it on? Yep. Yep, it's on. Okay. <laughs> you also switch them, so, don't, so one person talk. Uh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. 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 Well, that's what I, I just moved it up. Did that help at all? Yeah, All right, okay. Okay, okay. is that okay? Nobody is raising their hand, so you might as well just start. So, uh, do I understand that the final variant would use on, which will not move directly into OS 4, that it won't use a wine or a wing UAE layer as opposed to the current FS UAE setup? I don't know. Um, um, r r right now, it, it's set up that it, it boots into FS UAE because that, that, that is the more mature setup. I, w I would like for FSUAE to have the, uh, the the latest Tony Weiland updates integrated, and he's supposed to be working on that. And you know, you know, the potential there. You know, FSUAE is a Linux. You know, it, it it's native. You know, it's like it would be one less layer. You know, Wine Wine is not an emulator, but you know, it's it's an abstraction layer. It's one more thing we don't need. I would like it to be on FSUAE. Certainly, you know. I, I can we can make it run on on, on Win UAE and ultimately that's we might do that. Um, uh, we didn't do that with the Amy Kit because we want to be able to we wanted the whole rabbit rabbit hole thing. And if that were possible on on OS4 in its current configuration, you know, obviously that would be one more reason to do it. Um, all right. Well, technically, th this machine will do either one. I've got it set up. You can select it at boot time. You know, it's like I don't know if that's the way. It, you know ultimately it's to go, but it's set up to boot FSUAE. There's a switch that you can put in, in the configuration and switch it to booting. I've just discovered that when you OAE and Wine under Linux on Intel seems to be more performant than just FSUAE, and it also doesn't have the pointer problems that FSUAE has. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> it, it's my, per I like, I like it, but it's like FSUAE is a lot slicker under Linux than, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I like that little, uh, F12 thing, you know, where it like it tilts it. It's like that's just a personal. It's a visual thing, so I know that doesn't have any impact on performance or anything. But I, what I would like to see ultimately is is FS UAE brought up to the same level as uh, uh, Win UAE. Um, what about whether that happens what about or not? Integration for mobile media, so for example, like sort of pen drive. Oh, I, I that could be that. That's just a configuration. Yeah, you should be able to. You know, it should. Um, I don't know how does how does when you handle like uh, instant pop-ups. Well, see, that's the thing that I'm concerned about, right? Because typically, if, if the USB drive itself is not a file system that Linux understands, it doesn't mount it. It doesn't. Well, you able to see Ubuntu Ubuntu um, it's all set to auto mount, so it's like it'll. It, period. Yeah, I mean, it, well, it's not going to bump. It's not going to bump something it doesn't understand, but it understands NTFS, and I think it understands XFAT, but I'm not. Yes. 100% sure. I'm along the lines of I've got USB hard drives and USB sticks that are formatted in SFS. No, those are not going to show up. WinUAE can read them if you um, 
if you select them as a device in the configuration. Um, because I booted my my uh, old uh, OS4 uh, XE, well not booted, but uh, mounted my old uh, OS4 XE hard drives in um, WinUAE. Slash slash well, there's a it, WinUAE has the and, and and by extension FSUAE, but uh, WinUAE has a uh, um, has a one of the options is uh, select hard drive. They mean hard drive, you know, and you're going to browse it. Now, Windows can't necessarily see your SFS drive, but WinUAE can see it. And obviously, you have to have a SCSI controller or ID, whatever it is you have. Um, um, in my case, um, the XE had IDE drives, and I still had a machine that had IDE in it. So when my XE died, I plugged in the hard drive. I, I booted a version of 3.9. I, I was able to get off all my files off of uh, off, off my XE drive just by using WinUAE. So um, I don't know if that's the ideal way, but you know, certainly anybody can do that if they want. Uh, I think the main idea is to get a system where anyone that's uh, anyone can do it, as you say. But it takes an awful lot of time and work and effort. We know that. <laughs> uh, yeah, this so would have been done a year ago. Just to get an out of the box experience, you open it, you power it on, you've got these options all all there and available. No, that was the plan, to make it easier for everyone. So, yes. so your F12 um, uh, quick uh, link, blah, 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 yeah. thing, that's peculiar to WinUAE? Uh, no, no, that's FSUAE. Um, no, that's not true, because WinUAE does the same thing. It calls up a different window. So no, F12 is, a, is, a, is, a, is peculiar to Amiga emulators, I guess. I never really thought about it. But yeah, F12, either one. F12 is the magic button that, that calls up. Uh, so why are you using WinUAE at all? Because uh, WinUAE has it, give you the it gives me uh, it gives me the ability to do that rabbit hole thing we talked about. Oh. Uh, FSUAE. Uh, there. There's, no, there's the workaround that Kev, uh, Tony showed you under OS4 Classic, yeah. where you can use the F uh, the Windows key and you, you bring up the Linux and you run a Linux program, but it, it's much more integrated in. Uh, the Am Am Ami kit version on the WinUAE, where you just go to the rabbit hole, start the program. Right. Yeah. Or the. Yeah. Well, no, actually, it was created for Ami kit. Yeah, we, we created wasn't there. Yeah. Wasn't there. Um, but uh, and then he's buried, uh, you know, uh, now in the uh, Ami kit directory, the internet directory. We have iBrowse, uh, NetSurf. And Firefox icons, you know, so it's it's been integrated everywhere, and all the uh, default uh, file applications now load with Linux versions of, or Linux equivalents. You know, the default HTML uh, uh, browser is Firefox. The default uh, Office app is LibreOffice. So anytime you click on a text document, or I'm not much of an Office user, so whatever document, a doc file or whatever, um, it's going to launch in that. Um, and that's been configured uh, DOPUS. Uh, DOPUS has never been my thing, so it's like I don't know how you do that. But um, that's, that, that was what he did, is he went through and configured every file type to match to a Linux equivalent. So that when you're in the Amiga environment and you click on something, you're not dependent upon um, some 25-year-old 68K piece of software, which might do a, a great job, or it might not, you know, but it's just, it just a little bit of a connection to the modern world, you know, and still still be able to stick into the in the environment you want to be in or the environment you're used to. So, um, and Trevor has been using this thing for a year. He's constant, you know. I, I, I don't know. Do you Skype on that thing too? Yeah, it's, it's like it's like Skype. On, <laughs> so he's on Amy Kit 68K emulation, Skyping because, you know. And so the only reason Skype is on Alice is because I I watched him last year install Skype and. Um, Steam. Steam. And so I'm like, all right, um, neither one of those are simple applications to get on Linux. You know, they don't, so I'm like, okay, we're, we're going to take that out. We're gonna, it's going to just come with those things. And uh, so, you know, you know it's like it, it, some of the things you can do if you think about it. I, I'm not a very imaginative guy when it comes to thing, things like that. I browse the web and I paint graphics, you know, and I fuss with Linux the last couple of years. The good thing as well is with the, uh, uh, well, I mentioned the Enhancer software, uh, SE edition. That would be uh, ideally suited to the OS4 side, the classic side. And of course, when the 68K edition comes out, that will be ideally suited to upgrading the uh, the, uh, the classic side, the OS, the OS3, the OS3.8. 
on. Yeah, theoretically, there's not going to be a faster 68K environment that you could put this on, you know, with the graphic card. And, and, and nobody's trying to fool anybody. This is, this is a laptop running Windows and Linux and, and, you know, running emulation. The idea is just to create an experience, you know, sort of like a, a user environment um, on just whatever, you know, just commodity hardware, you know, it's like, let, let's, let us take advantage of the cheap hardware for a change and, and not just, uh, um, you know, just be, you know, tied to expensive custom hardware. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Are there any specific changes or additional software that you'd be adding to the default uh, OS one classic distribution to enable specific functions? I don't know. Uh, well, uh, we will be uh, have a, the option of the uh, enhancer software, the LE version, so that that will run nicely under under the classic. We're we'll, we'll testing on that anyway. The Amy Store, and the Amy Store, store works and great. Store works great. Uh, can you work on uh, rabbit holes in the future? Is that going to kind of be well? It, it is what it is. It's it like um, you can add to it. I mean, if 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 you if you, if you're halfway savvy with with scripts, these are like one line scripts. I don't know what's foresight. Yes, oh. well, I think we'll look at yeah. It's, you can actually access sort of applications that are foresight quite easily, as Tony showed you. But I prefer to have a rabbit hole feature. I actually want to call it Looking Glass, just to, just to keep up with the whole Alice in Wonderland. I mean, in case you don't know, Alice is. A or Amiga, it's your choice. <laughs> Laptop incorporating the classic experience. So that's where it came from. And the Alice in Wonderland theme was dreamt up by Ken and, uh, and um, Kevin Saunders in Australia. And obviously Rabbit Hole is, it, is from Alice in Wonderland. And Looking Glass. So I would like to see Looking Glass on the Windows side, but that's the lot for grabs. Yeah, we'll see. Like yes, he's, yeah, there's, there's, that might actually require some programmer. You know, it's like if some, Industrious OS4 programmer wants to write a, a win launch equivalent for OS4. We're in business, you know. That's all, you know. That's. Is source code available for the OS3 version? It's an old app. I don't know. It's on it's off of Amy Kid. Or, what's that? Is it in, on AmyNet or? I think it's on AmyNet. I mean, it, 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 it's it's distributed with WinUAE. It's just it's one of those little apps in the uh, Amiga Programs folder that nobody ever looks at. Um, but uh, uh, but I looked at it <laughs> and. Just to see what was in there and how it worked, and and Jan, had, in, in fairness, Jan had been using it to launch something. Oh, Notepad, Notepad and WordPad on the Windows side, and so he, you know, he, he, you know, he was doing something. He just didn't think it as far as far as I did, and and I got to thinking, and I'm like, well, if I'm running Windows, a Windows program on Wine, I can I get Wine to reach out to and try searching launch application, you know, scripting, a, you know, because everybody assumes you want to launch a Windows application, not that you want to launch, you know, that you want to go the other way. They assume you want to go. It was, it was fun. I think but should, it was there. It was I think there. we should also say and, and thank Stefan uh, Stunzi. Oh, Stunzi, yeah. He, uh, thank him for, um, for MUI. He, uh, we've got a special deal whereby I think what I contribute to his bike riding fund, but he's, uh, he's given us MUI. Uh, just for the Alice, just, just for Alice. Yeah. So, um, so uh, unlike other operating systems, we've got actually got an MUI key in Alice. Yep. Uh, is that key used for both the OS3 and the OS1 solutions? Yep. yep, yep, so as long as... So hopefully that sets to the any suggestion. Uh, yeah, this exactly. is, no, this was a personal interaction between Trevor, who knows everybody. Not, not as many people as Jan, but, you know, almost. And, uh, um, you know, and and Stefan. I want to call him Stephen because that's how I pronounce. <laughs> but uh, so, and you know, it, it works great. You know, it's uh, it's it's the uh, infamous uh, version four that you know everybody loves. But uh, uh, but it's still you know it's still. Unless the anticipated uh, date for um, yesterday. We just saw that first one. Yeah. And it's from a banana over there. <laughs> He's a guinea pig, you know. And, He's right. And we're taking we're, we're taking um, n n expressions of interest. We've got two others expressing interest already. Uh, Robert over there and, uh, and, Ma and Mike. I would re. No, three. 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 You got three. I would really. <laughs> we need to we need to set up some kind of poll because I would really like to know how many people legitimately 
I mean, because if you think about it, it's, you know, if you need a new laptop, or, you know, it's like, this is not a screaming gaming laptop. This is a sensible, you could use it every day. You know, it's got a, mine's got a 10 hour battery. I assume it'll, you know, that's what it says. I don't know if I've, I've never tried it because I never unplugged, but you know, uh, that's what it says. Um, so it probably at least goes a couple, right? So, um, anyway, come to see me and I'll put you on the list. You're not on the list. You're not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> That's a private joke from a previous Ami West. <laughs> um, so we'll make sure you're on the list. The uh, the other thing is, um, um, what about Windows? I mean, um, I'd be curious to know how many people would be interested in a laptop without Windows at all. I would, but it's, uh, it, uh, it's not a deal breaker. Uh, well, no, no, no. This isn't. This isn't. This would take extra work. <laughs> this was not a. This is not a. You know, this would be easier for us. No, this would be a little extra work. <laughs> but we've heard from, well, now, some people that uh, they would rather just do away with Windows altogether. There'll be a slightly less expensive. not paying the Windows. Well, that's, that's a U, that's a EU thing. I don't think we could. I don't know that. Oh, right. okay. Yeah, in the EU, you're you're allowed to like recoup, you know, the money that's the built into. And here you don't. So it's like, no, this would just be like, you know, you'd still have your your uh, key if you ever wanted to put it on, but you know, who's you know, who would be interested in it if? Yeah. You want Windows? Okay. Right. And that's what, yeah, a lot, you know, the... Uh, no, I was waiting for this question. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> well, actually, two things. One, if you guys can repeat the questions so they can hear... Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. yeah, so yeah. I was uh, listening, I was watching out there. Okay, and I, came yeah. up, I wasn't hearing the questions. Oh, but, sorry. So the, the thing which I was wondering about processors, I know you can like I applied to this. If somebody wants a higher spec... Higher doesn't mean, higher doesn't make me mean compatible, does it? Well... Yes and no. I mean, it depends on. The, it, I mean, if there's if there's a probably no, because uh, the problem is you know it, we can't really do an install for every single laptop out there. Maybe it would work. You know, maybe it would redetect hardware. And may, maybe you know, in a perfect world, you get as close to the i5 version. You know, because we've all decided i5 is 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 a good compromise between performance and cost. Because you know, uh, an i7, you know, it's like sexy, and you know, we, you know, uh, we only need two cores. WinUAE wants two cores, one for uh, the 68K and the other for the PowerPC. Right, you're relying on a big fat slow operating system underneath that wants as much as it can. That's true. That's true. And if you're running higher resolution and higher, you're doing heavier load things on the Amiga side. The, particularly I, in the I don't know how many people want to spend, you know, an extra well, two or three hundred dollars. Consider doing a higher spec version. It would be the same Lenovo, but higher end. It was a demand, yes. Of course yeah, there you go. But it would be a, you'd have to limit it to a certain, you know, right. spec spot. Yeah. But I mean, if you're spending $800 and it's only whether it's $300 or $400 to get some power of the line, you know, wonder how many people would be worth, you know, consider that worthwhile. Mm. For what it's worth, when you eat love processor, you know, it just, just, exactly. just particularly under PPC. Yeah, you you can never you can never have enough processors. So it's like, it's just a matter of you know you know how big a check do you want to write and uh, well, um, you know, and you're in halfway, you may as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah. The other thing is, okay. when are you going to do this for a power PC? Um, power PC. Sorry, sorry, they... <laughs> no, <laughs> another in joke. I think I think we've got one coming. Uh, isn't there? Uh, isn't there a netbook coming uh, any any day now from from yeah, Hyperion? Two weeks. I have two one weeks. Have one a month, two a month. Oh, do they? Okay, so. guys. I think we're we're someone else is coming on now. So okay. Uh, thanks no, very no, much. No, Thank you very much. Also, warranty support situation look like for yours. Uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Yours. <laughs> yes, Trevor has 24-hour tech, you know, Skype tech support, and uh, and uh, um. Well, yeah, but you don't have loss for loss recovery apparently. No, <laughs> no, no loss recovery. Huh. Take a blank sheet of paper, look at it, read it. That's your warranty. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the reality: these are these are Windows laptops. They have whatever warranty. Um, 
In the U.S., we have, uh, I'm not a lawyer, um, you, you know lots of lawyers. In the U.S., we have the ability to resell these things and, you know, and, and maintain the, uh, I don't know, I better shut up. Anyway, uh, um, um, presumably it's going to be whatever the lap, the, but I think what you really mean is the, the warranty on the, the integrity of the install. And I will do my best to keep everybody on the same page. Um, if you are a Windows user, beware that you, you know, it's like, unless you're familiar with dual boot systems or triple boot systems, um, you, you know, these are fussy systems. Windows does not want to share real estate with anybody else, Linux, anybody. And it'll, and do, its, it'll do its best to wipe out. It, it yeah. continually, you know, it's like every update is a risk for uh, turning back on uh, secure boot in the BIOS, turning on uh, fast boot, which is, is just hibernate, you know, renamed fast boot. You need these two things off in order to be able to dual boot um, a uh, triple boot or whatever uh, a system. And these are all things that every multi-booter knows. You just get used to it. But it's easy to forget that, you know, when, you know, when, when people say, oh, it's, it booted into Windows again. It's like, well, of course it did, because it's like you ran Windows, right? And it did an update. And, uh, and even I was, um, it, uh, we had an anniversary update in September or whatever, which is, it was a service pack. It was a brand new install. And that was the first time I'd actually seen it right to the BIOS. And because I, I didn't know Windows did that really just in a, as a matter of course. Um, but, uh, well, this is all EFI. So, um, yeah, it, and it did. And it reset everything to whatever it felt like it wanted. So, obviously, in my case, I've already, I, I knew exactly what had happened. And it, you know, it was a five minute fix. But to the average person, all they know is they can't see their, uh, their, their Amiga anymore. So, this is a, this is this is a delicate. It, I don't want to say delicate. It's it's fairly robust, but it is susceptible to uh, tampering. You know, it's like you can. Yeah, yesterday, somebody uh, decided to create a new account on my on my laptop, and which was fine. But you know, you don't. You know, the Amy Kit account or the OS4 account. Those. You know. You know, if you understand Linux at all, those are the ones that had FSUAE and WinUAE installed. This new account had nothing. It was just. It was a pretty Linux install that I made to look like OS4. You know, it's like, you know, but uh, they, they, it's like things like that. If you're not familiar with Linux, if you're not familiar with. Uh, yes, go to sourceforge.net and download. AmyPup is my Linux distribution. It's kind of the the granddaddy of this system. It's a mini version. It doesn't it doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles. It's it's version eight of Amy Kid is on it, but uh, I actually got to go to got to go to Jan's site to get there because I didn't even put that in there. It just has it has WinUAE on it, and you you know bring your own system to the table. But this is a USB thumb drive. It's fully installable, but it's not really meant to be installed. It's meant to be run from thumb drive. That's your system. You know, you plug it in. It's getting a little long in the tooth. Does not work with EFI, so it's not going to work with Macs. It's not going to work with any, you know with anything that's been produced in the last couple of years. But if you got an old machine, it almost certainly will work, and it'll boot into um, uh, an Amiga-looking uh, version of Linux yeah. with uh, yes. Do you think it would be possible to update that so it would be the kind of thing that somebody could use to go into well, local you never know. Target to you never know. And see if the laptop. That's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, um, a way to test, you know, go there. Maybe, but I mean, it's it's not it's not an insignificant pro project, and I spent like a year on it. You know, it's like that was my first real experience with Linux, and so you know, and that was a little Linux. You know, Ubuntu is a behemoth. It's you know, it's the Windows of Linux. But I think what's what's I mean, you talk about Linux, but when you're using it. It feels very lightweight. You feel like you're using an Amiga. Yeah. So it's lightweight. Well, the, the, real, the reality is it is lightweight relative to, you know, because it's like, you know, I've got Windows on here. I've got Ubuntu. And Ubuntu boots. Windows will boot quickly if you have fast boot turned on because all it is doing is coming out of hibernation. But if you turn it off, you realize just how slowly Windows 10 boots. Ubuntu doesn't do that. It boots in, you know, five or ten seconds. And so you throw the other stuff on it, in 15 seconds you're into an operating system, depending on your hard drive speed, of course. Um, uh, Windows 10, if you turn off uh, hibernation slash fast boot, you're, you're, you're going to still be waiting a minute, you know, or whatever it is to get, you know, to get into the system. Uh, obviously we're all spoiled because, you know, that's nothing compared to what it used to be, but, uh, but it's all relative. So. so it's still, it's lightweight, even though I'm talk, calling it a behemoth, it's just because it's, it, 
and it's built on Debian. Debian is is very cool in and of itself, um, um, and uh, and Ubuntu builds on that. Okay, guys, I guess we better go. Get up. Who's the next? Sorry, sorry.